separating your work life and home life. I want to talk about this a fair bit because I'm in the FM industry where we often expected to do silly hours and people ignore the fact that we do it. Um, I've started to move away from it. I don't mind doing it on a consultancy basis, but I'm not a corporate person in the sense that I'm not a yes man. I don't bark when a boss shouts. Um, I simply do what needs to be done and okay, I don't mind putting the extra effort in, but only when it's needed and it has to be a two way street. As a contractor, not a problem because you'll jam the hours in, get the job done, then have some time off. In the corporate world, they want their cake and eat it. Um, they want you there all the hours regardless because they want you to work over to do a job. Then the next thing is, when you say, well, I worked all, all the way through last night and whatever, I'm going to go home early today. So you're working hours at nine to five. Well, don't get into it. Um, companies can quote your working hours and you can quote them back. Um, so let's, let's talk about the separation. First thing is, I mentioned in the last video about the, the uh, quiet hours on my phone, or maybe I didn't. My phone has this ability to switch itself off at one minute past five and not switch itself back on till 8.59 in the morning, which basically means the company can't get hold of me outside of working hours. But I've given them a minute each way, because obviously when you're working and you're working from home with travel, Obviously, if I'm traveling, um, it would have been within those hours. But obviously, most of the time it's not. You're normally traveling back a bit later than you should be because of the way they've written the contract. Not a biggie. But at the same time, it doesn't mean you have to be on the phone because you're on your way home. So that's one way. The phone is off outside of working hours. Gone. Nada. Can't contact me. Email, say, I do not touch the work email outside of work. I disconnect it completely. Um, lucky enough to have a corporate laptop which doesn't talk to most things, um, even half the stuff it's supposed to be. Um, so it just doesn't get switched on at, in home unless I actually need it for something, but not outside of working hours. So I've removed work from my life that way. It's not in my emails, it's not in my telephone, it's not got any connection with me outside of work. People need to do this more often. It doesn't matter if it's your business or not, because people should be aware, if you're managing a business, that you still are a human being. You're not a robot, and they, you shouldn't be at the beckoning call of any customer or client um, because they don't like it themselves, so they're adaptable. You know, if you turn around and say, look, 5, p 5 p.m., if you can't wait till the, tomorrow, if you're going to call me, you better make sure it's important. Um, it says, because I won't call you at 2 in the morning for something if it wasn't important, so don't do it to me. <laughs> and people understand that. You know, I've had people before where they've called up and said, no, oh, I'm working on this at 8 o'clock at night. And like, Is it anything to do with me? Well, no, but I need to get it done for tomorrow night. So it's your problem. Yeah. So why have you called me at home? And it may sound a bit brutal, but the fact is, it's often very trivial stuff they could do themselves. Um, they just find it quicker to ask somebody who actually already knows. So with something like that, I don't answer them, I just disconnect them from the phone because if you do answer them, they'll still do it. <laughs> now, the reason I separate this is home shouldn't be affected by work. I get very, very uh, defensive on my family life. I do not like work interfering with it. Um, the company is well aware of how defensive I am. I have no problem with leaving a company that impacts in a negative way on my family life. Simple as that. No company is worth damaging your family life for. 
So, they're separated. Now, I know some people out there have difficult family lives as well as difficult work lives, and this is where your stress levels go up. Um, one of the reasons, is once that phone goes off at 5 p.m., your stress level will go off because you don't have to deal with anything coming in from work, and that's one of the reasons why you disconnect completely. But I know people, um, and I've been in a situation myself where you've got somebody that's nagging you when you get back. You've been driving, you've been up early, been driving for hours, got home, and somebody's nagging you about something, you know, they, can you paint the bedroom this weekend, can you? You haven't even had a shower yet. <laughs> so, sometimes you've got to find a bit of distance between the two, which is something I want to talk about now. One of the things I do is I go to the photography club. The photography club has nothing for family life, it has nothing for work life. It is a bit of me time. Um, and with people that I'm not connected with either, I'm also learning new skills with photography and photography software. And because it's disconnected from home and work, you're more relaxed than probably any other time because there's no end goal there's no uh like you must paint the best spare bedroom which is like i don't want to do it but it needs to be done uh, you know and you work oh you've got to have this diet you don't have any of that because this is a bit of me time the same goes for fishing fishing is the same that's why a lot of people go fishing it's not always about catching fish you know people say well why does somebody sit there for, for like eight to twelve hours and not catch any fish it seems so stupid the the actual fact is they've got away from the things that bug them now it may sound a bit bad to get away from your own family sometimes but the fact is that's why they do it it's, yeah they enjoy fishing because you obviously you choose your hobby or sport but it's to do with taking things out your day-to-day -day surroundings it's to do with um having something that you enjoy you know um sitting there in the rain even with a little soggy cheese and tomato sandwich and not catching anything for hours really doesn't bother most fishermen they're not there half the time to catch fish they're there to relax it's like women going to a spa you know and guys that want to go to a spa as well but the fact is it's to do with relaxing now some people will go that's why they were saying like somebody will go, oh how can you sit it's to do with chilling out but often because some people don't have that balance this is you know i talked in the other video about anger before this is often where you can get that build up because they haven't got that little bit of space um and that's why it's important to create a bit of space but i said i enjoy photography i enjoy fishing um Although I do my college work, I count college work as work. I don't count it as uh, stuff in my own time, although it is done in my own time, I, but it, it should only really be done when I'm in the UK working in the evenings, just to sit there and do an hour a night to get it done. It shouldn't be when I come to Spain. I did it this week because I'm a bit behind on my course uh, due to the, the way work is at the minute. It's, bit all over the place so I had to catch up and that's what I'm working on now the whole point with this is that is balancing your life you know I'll catch up but then I won't be putting that back into my day-to-day -day routine um, at home it will only go into my work routine and that's what I'm saying you need to balance these three you need a life you know don't work yourself to death but also having that little bit of space gives you a bit of brain power um, and I'll talk about that now um, on the next video about the importance of why we have this bit of space right, thanks for watching